Well, I just got this big box in the mail. Uh, I tore off the address labels that were on the top, but I haven't opened it yet. It just came in the mail. Uh, people sometimes ask, where do you get your uh, romance novels that you buy? Well, a lot of times I get them at thrift stores or at uh, library sales where they sell used books. But occasionally I buy them on eBay, which is what happened this time. Um, this should be uh, 40 novels, most of them Harlequin romance novels from like the 1970s. But there's also um, about five other uh, books in here, uh, one of which is by uh, Daisy Thompson who I made a video about previously. Anyways, we're going to open up the box, and then I'll uh, sort out the books. So I'm, I'm going to put the Harlequins in numerical order to make better sense of them, and then uh, we'll look at the books. Right now I'm just going to carefully open the top here, hoping that I don't cut any books that are right by the edge. And then we'll take a look and see what we got here. Trying to do this one-handed here. Let's see. I'll make a little better cut. There we go. Okay, that side is done. I'll just turn it over. our books. They seem to be nicely packed. And I'll just start bringing them out here. Like I said, I'll put these in numerical order afterwards because I doubt that the uh, original sender did that. There's one of the non-Harlequins. We'll take a look at that. Another non-Harlequin. And like I said, there's supposed to be about 40 books in here. And let me just, uh, well, I guess I might as well just keep going through them. I'm just going to pause the video, but uh, oops. as I'm making sure I'm just getting the, the Harlequins out and putting them in their own stacks. Always reuse the uh, the padding there. Some of them are a little bent up, but I was uh, wasn't expecting perfection when I bought these. Let's see. Denise Robbins book. And there's that Daisy Thompson one. I think this is the, the, her first one for the uh, Pyramid Books line. Another Denise Robbins. Set that aside. All right, so we got all of them out of the box. I'm going to pause the video and we'll take a look, the, look at these. Okay, so here's the books. <laughs> all out of the boxes and all those red edge Harlequins are put in numerical order. Now, before... We, I'm going to start with talking about the Harlequins. Before we get to the Harlequins, one of the reasons I bought this lot is that it, a lot of them are during that period when uh, Harlequin started printing the books uh, instead of Simon & Schuster and had them distributed in the U.S. at the exact same time. We'll get into that in a bit, but if you remember, I talked about this with the numbering issue in the very first video of my Romance Novel Collection series. And these these books right here, these uh, four books, did not come in the lot that I bought, to, uh, that it came in the mail today, but these are books I've had, but I want to use them to demonstrate what I'm talking about. You'll remember in the previous video I talked about the numbers, and this is uh, book number 923 of the Harlequin Romance series. And you'll see there the price 40 cents in the corner. And there's a little book stamp thing there. 
And now this one was printed in Canada. It shows it was originally printed in by Mills and Boone in England, 1965, and then Harlequin edition, June 1965, and it says printed in Canada, right there. So this predates, as far as I know, this is a first printing of a Harlequin original Canadian edition, predating the time that Simon & Schuster started distributing them in the U.S., and they would also print the books in the U.S., apparently. Now, here's a, another book here. You'll notice this says 51139. Now, this is actually just book number 1139, but the, for these Simon & Schuster editions, they added a 5 to the top. You'll notice that the price has gone up from 40 cents to 50 cents. Um, and we'll look inside here. So it says Harlequin, but you notice now it says New York, New York. I don't think it said that on the other one. Let's check. Nope. See, on the other one there, it just said Canada. Now it's saying New York, New York. And now it's saying printed in the USA. And it's still saying Harlequin edition, September 1967. But this edition is printed in the USA. Now I believe that means that these are the editions that were published, printed by uh, Simon & Schuster, a.k.a. Pocket Books. And they would come out three months after the Canadian edition would. Now these books were reprinted many times. So you'll see this one is a 1371. But you'll see the price on there is 95 cents. This is a reprint, and you can tell now it says printed in Canada on the back. But you can tell it's a reprint by looking inside here, and you'll see Harlequin edition, February 1970, second printing, 70, November 1974, third printing, December 1976. So they all look the same. You know, you may see one that has a five in there. That would be in a, a U.S. edition, uh, you know, from 1970. But, you know, that, that price is sort of a giveaway. If you look on the front there and you see, oh, it's 95 cents, they up the price. But otherwise, it looks identical to the, you know, they might have changed the font. Sometimes they change the font on the title, um, and so it looks a little slightly different. But uh, otherwise, you know, it's uh, it looks the same. This is, but this is actually the third printing of the Harlequin edition. And here's another one, 109.4. Let's see, this is 60 cents, printed in Canada, it says. Now, it says right on the front here, um, to supply this demand, Harlequin prints an assortment of old titles every year, and these are made available to all bookstores via special Harlequin Jamboree displays. So these are exact reprints of the Harlequin original romances, it says. So... You can see on here, Harlequin edition, 1967, reprinted 67, 70, 72, 74. And this is printed in Canada. So <clears throat> one of the giveaways, obviously, would be the price. You know, the price is going to be a little higher. But um, So that's something to keep in mind for if you're a collector of Harlequin romances. So what does this have to do with this lot that I just got in the mail? All the, all the rest of these are the, are the books I got today. Now you'll see here, this says book 1374. It has a 50 cent mark on there, so that seems correct, you know, that it would be around that time. But you'll notice it says printed in Canada. Someone has written their name, Betty Simpson. They'll be in a lot of these books. This is a Canadian edition printed in Canada. Now it does say... Harlequin Canadian Edition, published February 1970. Harlequin U.S. Edition, published May 1970. But this looks like a genuine Canadian edition of this book, unless they reprinted it or something. So, so to me, that looks like, a, you know, ordinarily for a U.S. edition, it would have a 5, where it says 1374, it would have a 5 in front of it. So now we go to one, uh, 1480. Book number 1,480. You'll see it has a 5 in there. And this should be, when well, they'll see this says printed in Canada. 
So here's the thing. At some point, I believe it was around December 1969, the books no longer say printed in USA. They say printed in Canada, regardless if they have a five in front of them or not. So that seems to indicate to me that uh, Harlequin stopped having the books published by Simon & Schuster in late 1969, um, but still uh, had them distribute them in the U.S. Why they kept the, the five on there, I guess, and why they made it so that they were coming out three months after the U.S. editions, I do not know. But according to this, it's printed in Canada. Now, the only other thing I can think of is if, if this was a reprint, a lot of these books, you'll notice from this time period, have an R on the spine. Does that indicate reprint, or does that simply just stand for romance? Uh, that I don't know. It's a mystery. Um, but anyway, so you'll see it there. It's New York, New York. So maybe this indicates that you know Harlequin was publishing the uh, the books at this point, not not Simon and Schuster. Let's keep going. Uh, 51484, so book number 1,484. Printed in Canada, again. And it still, uh, still has the 5 in front of it. So this is from 1971. Again, even the inside. So both the cover and the interior say printed in Canada, even though it has a 5. So... You know, I assume this just means that the five ones were printed for specifically for the American market. Now we're going to go to 1510. As you can see there, 50 cents price printed in Canada. Printed in Canada there. And 1971. Okay, so now we're at 1524 and 1526. Um, so you can see this one doesn't have a 5 in front of the number, and this one does, even though they're around the same time, same price. But they both say printed in Canada on the back of them. So why does one have a 5 and the other do not? Now this is interesting. The, uh, the original reader, the purchaser of this book, had written 372 on there. Let's see. when uh, Now, this is interesting, too. It doesn't say New York in here. don't know if that means anything. This is printed in Canada. Harlequin U.S. edition, published December 1971. Now, I'm assuming that the original reader was from the U.S., because I did buy this in the U.S., this uh, this package. It wasn't an import or anything. So, we'll go to 1526. Again, printed in Canada. There's no date on that one. Now, this one does say New York, New York. It's very strange. This is a reprint from 1961. Again, the, uh, both the Canadian and U.S. editions came out in 1971. All right. Here's two more. 1532 and 1535, both of which have um, fives in front of the numbers. Both of which say printed in Canada on the back. I'll push that forward so it can be seen. Let's see here. Now this one also has a date written on here. February 26, 1972. That's presumably when the person uh, bought this one. This says that U.S. edition published January 1972. So they bought this when it was a brand new book in the U.S. But as you can see, the original Canadian edition came out earlier. But again, this is printed in Canada. 1535, 
So this was February 1972. It does say New York and New York in front of there. January 1972 was when the U.S. edition was published. All right. Now we get to the odd case that you'll sometimes see Harlequin books from this period. They have a five dash and then the number. So there'll be a smaller five. So they're keeping that five in there for some reason, but they, they've minimized the five. And this is sort of the period when the five is being phased out. So this is also February 1972. Again, no, no mention of New York on this one, on the title page. I don't know if that's significant or what. Does mention the heart, uh, does mention the U.S. edition, February 1972. Let's see about this one. Also printed in Canada. Uh, here we go. Now the the person has written on here, uh, March second, nineteen seventy two, the original owner. And this page starts to appear in the books. The case of the 24 missing titles of special importance to our American readers. Over the years, many of our American readers have been distressed that Harlequin romances were published in Canada three months ahead of the United States release date. We are pleased to announce that effective April 1972, Harlequin romances will have simultaneous publication of new titles throughout North America. To solve the problem of the 24 missing titles, number 1553 to 1576, you know, because those were, you know, three published three months earlier in Canada, and now if they're jumping ahead so they're coming out at the same time, you're going to have 24 books that in the gap, you know, the three-month gap that won't be released in the U.S. But it says uh, that arrangement will be made with many Harlequin Romance retailers to have these missing titles available available to you before the end of 1972. Watch for your retailer special display. So we'll see here that the um, those 24 missing titles are gradually going to be re released a few per month from the next few months. So April 1972 is when they're com the books are going to be released simultaneously in the U.S. and Canada. And then you'll see in sub subsequent months, you'll have earlier numbers being released in the U.S., so, for example, here's, here's the very next book. This is 1551. This is 1552. What numbers did they say were affected? 1553 to 1576. So this is, you know, the book right before that change. No mention of New York. March 1972. So it's the month right before that change. Now we go to... See, this is interesting. The price has gone up. See, that, so that says 50 cents. Now this is 60. I wonder. I'm going to jump ahead here and look to see. Yeah, it looks like the price did go up to 60 cents at this point. So we have 1557 printed in Canada. But this is one of those books that, you know, the, the, that they went back and reprinted that uh, American audiences didn't see at first. So it says Harlequin edition published January 1972. That must be the Canadian edition. And then it says reprinted May 1972. That must be the edition that was one of the 24 missing books that was then came out in 1970, uh, May 1972 to make up for having, you know, uh, been missed. So when this book came out, you would have had 1557, but then also you know, one, the books from like 1576 and so on, one, you know, in, past that, if that makes any sense. And you'll notice on here there's an introductory page. Welcome to the wonderful world of Harlequin romances. And it's sort of introducing people to the concept of Harlequin romances there. Probably assuming that, you know, there may be some people who, who've never read one before. And now, because they're being released simultaneously in the U.S. and Canada, maybe that uh, they thought that would be a good time to sort of introduce themselves. We have some similar things here, 1558, so that's the very, the very next book. 
And again, it has the introductory language. No mention in New York. And it says reprinted May 1972. So same deal. Printed in Canada. 1572. That's a beautiful cover. Printed in Canada. Now, I know some, some readers are probably, you know, bored that I'm uh, laboring over this numbering thing, but um, I just think it, this was the main reason I got this lot, because I wanted to kind of explore this issue. Um, and you'll see here, Harlequin Edition was originally March 1972, but this reprinted August 1972. That means it's the U.S. edition. And so this is one of the last ones of those missing 24. This will be another one, 1574, uh, by Ann Mather, actually. And so again, this one is reprinted from August 1972. So 1576, I believe, is what they said was the uh, one of the missing 24. Let me look in the list here. Yeah, 1576 was the last book of the missing 24. So this is these are some of the last that were released in August 1972. So now everybody, you know, everybody's caught up to date with the uh, issues of the uh, Harlequins. Now you go to these two oddities. You'll see now that everybody's caught up to date, they're all coming at the same time. Well, those, they weren't caught up to date really till August, you know, when those missing 24 books were finally reprinted. But these were coming out before then. Because now you'll notice it still says 5 1584, 5 1591. But these are like the last, among the last books that will have the, um, you know, the five in front of them. So you'll see here, reprint Harlequin edition published April 1972. So there's no U.S. edition for this. It's just all coming out at the same time. And the same with this. Again, here's that thing about the 24 missing titles. So this, May 1972, is when it was published. So just to further belabor the point, so that means even though this one has a higher number, this one came out in the U.S. after the higher number one. So uh, 1591 came out in the U.S., before 1574 did, even though 1574 is a lower number, because they were trying to fill the gap. And we'll look at some more here. All right, so here is book number 1594 and 1595. Move this out of the way so we can get a better look at them. And these came out in was June 1972. There's an uh, ad for the Golden Harlequin Library, which was a hardcover series reprinting old Harlequin novels. And book 1595 is from the same time. These came out the same month. So, you know, back in 1972, you would have seen them on the shelf together at the same time. You know, as brand new books. So, we'll just look there at June 1972. 1598 and 1620, uh, June 1972, 1620, September 1972, 1627, uh, October October 1972, 1648 and 1686, and Re Rachel Lindsay is Roberta Lee, who I've been, talked about before in uh, my very first uh, video that I did about romance novels, my romance novel collection part one which I uploaded to my YouTube channel in uh, 2019, I believe, showed my Harlequin romance novels. That was the very first video, and I mentioned Rachel Lee and uh, Rachel Lin Roberta Lee, who is also Rachel Lindsay. 
And, oh, here we go. This is interesting. Have you heard about Harlequin's great new series, Harlequin Presents? So this, this one is from 1973, which is when, May 1973, which is when Harlequin uh, Presents debuted. That's cool. And this is book 1756. February 1974. See if there's anything interesting in the back. Have you missed any of these Harlequin romances? And 1775. From 1974, April. Have you heard about Harlequin's great new series, Harlequin Presents? These are like the very first novels in the Harlequin Presents line. And you notice they have a higher cover price than the 60 cents of the uh, of the main series. They cost 75 cents. And let's see here. 1786 and 1790 are here. Uh, from June 1974. And... June 1974, so they came out at the same time, even though they're a few numbers apart. See if there's any interesting. Uh, this month's Harlequin Romances. So here you have 1786, which is that book right there, and 1790, which is this book. So these all came out this month. And then here were the Harlequin Presents books that came out this month. That's interesting. And 1801 and 1802. And this one's by Betty Niels, who I talked about in a previous video. 1974. Oh, there's one of those jamborees. Remember when I was talking earlier in this video about the... Um, uh, when they, the missing 24 books, you know, between whatever it was, February and April of 1972, that they had to catch up on. They said that they were going to release them in a jamboree uh, shipper like this. Um, so this, this jamboree reprints some of the some of those old uh, books in the series, just makes them available again. So that explains why, you know, we were looking earlier at some of those books and they'd have different prices, like higher prices, but they were later editions. And they would be reissued, and sometimes in a special jamboree, you know, box like this that would be at your local bookstore or your grocery store or whatever. And it would be, oh, these old Harlequins are now available again. This book is from August 1974, and this one is from probably the same month, August 1974. And this is the thing about the Harlequin Omnibus. So this would reprint three books by one author in a paperback edition. So they were constantly reprinting, you know, these books in different editions. You know, different ways of selling them. First in those Golden Harlequin hardcover series, then, you know, just as individual reprints, and then the Omnibus edition. So here we have 1807 and 1815. From 74, 1974, and 1974. You can notice now the guys are looking a little more contemporary. You know, this is, a lot of times they would look like this, the cover is kind of, but then uh, now this guy's looking a little more Peter Fonda, you know, a little more, a little more 1974-ish. And very soon they will change their cover format. So, this is the, the change. Now, you would think the book on the, the right would be way later because it looks more modern, you know, or more contemporary than, than that style. But this one, I think they're just a few months apart. This one is 2027, 
which came out in 76, December 1976. Now you'll notice it says printed in the USA too. So these earlier ones, let's see, this was book 1815, and it's printed in Canada. Well, in 76, by 76, they were printed in the USA again. And they'll say that on the covers. So, and this one here, uh, 2052, which somebody has clipped the UPC barcode out. That was another thing. They started putting UPC barcodes on the back. Because, you know, supermarkets and stuff would have installed barcode machines by then to make it easier. So this is March 1977, printed in USA. So 1977 is when they revamped the cover design to make it a little more contemporary looking. All right, so now we're done with the Harlequins. Now we'll go into, these are the other books that I bought in that lot. And these were kind of even more what I wanted uh, than the Harlequins, although the Harlequins, of course, were interesting too. This is a nurse novel by Renee Shan, who I don't know anything about. This is a Lancer book. It says five on there. I don't know what that means, though. This is part of their Easy Eye larger type. Later on, you'll see the Magnum books, uh, prestige books, will have an Easy Eye and like the Valentine books uh, will have like this easy eye thing. Even though Lancer went out of business in like 1972, somehow those kept showing up. Um, so this book is from 1968, although the, it was originally written in 64. Here's the back cover. A book by Daisy Thompson, Prelude to Love. I If you look at... My, one of my previous videos, it was called My, My Romance Novel Collection Part 40. It's all about Daisy Thompson books, who's a very truly obscure romance writer, but who had her own line of books uh, in, in the 1970s, first by Pyramid Books, and then by Pyramid's publishing successor, Jove Books, by the late 1970s. And this was the first book in the line, Prelude to Love which also was later reprinted by Jove Books. There was a Jove Book edition from like 1977. But uh, I didn't have her first book before. And this is first published in 1963 in the UK. This Pyramid edition is 1974. This is copyright D.H. Thompson, 1963. Um, you'll see on here, Daisy H. Thompson. Some of her books are, are bylined to D.H. Thompson instead of Daisy Thompson. Anyways, if you want to know more about Daisy Thompson, see that video titled My Romance Novel Collection Part 40, Daisy Thompson, where I run through a bunch of her books. Anyways, I'm glad to have added that to my collection. Then we have two books by Elizabeth Cadell. Cadell? Cadell? However her name is pronounced. A British writer of the 20th century. Uh, this is book number seven and book number eight of this line from Bantam Books in the 1970s. I don't know anything about Elizabeth Cadell, which was part of the interest of wanting to uh, learn more. This one is from 1971, it looks like, although originally published in 1968. And this one, 1971, originally published in 1957 is when it was copyright. Anyways, finally, we have here two books by Denise Robbins. And Denise Robbins was a British writer um, who was the first president of the Romantic Novelists Association, uh, which when it was founded in 1960. And if you know about the Romance Writers of America, the RWA, um, well, the Romantic Novelist Association is sort of the UK equivalent of that, although the, uh, the British group was formed um, like over 20 years before the RWA was. So anyway, she was the first president of the group and was a prolific and respected writer, Denise Robbins. These are both published by Fawcett Books. Interesting thing about these two books is that the original owner, who is the same person who bought all those Harlequins, dated these inside here. 
So this is July 20th, 1971. Presumably that's the date that she bought the book. So we look inside here. This is Fawcett. This is other books by Denise Robin. And so we see here that this actually came out in July 1971. Uh, it was originally, you know, copyright 1959. But uh, here, let's see if we can get this in better. There we go. So copyright 1959, printed in the U.S. in July 1971. So this this person that bought this, they bought this the month that it came out. <clears throat> So, which is pretty awesome. Even though the book looks kind of rough, you know, it has sort of the speckling on it. I don't know what that's from, but it is, a, 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 you know, from an original purchaser. Uh, uh, presumably, you know, I assume that's what that, uh, that you know, notation indicates. And this is also published by Fawcett. Um, this is actually came out a little bit earlier, although they bought it later. They bought this on August 18th, 1971, but the book actually came out in 1970, as we shall see. So it's September 1970, it was published by Fawcett, but the copyright 1961. Let's see if there's any interesting ads on the back here. Nope. But there's the back cover. Let's see if this one had any ads. There's an ad for another Denise Robbins book. Actually, it's not the same book. No, it's a different one. All right, and that's it. So, let's set those there. So I bought 40 books, 40 romance novels, and I paid just under $21, including the shipping, and for 40 paperback books, um, the 40 that we just looked at. Um, and I noticed uh, the postage... Uh, that the person who sold me the books to me, they had uh, paid something like $8.86 to, to mail it. So just under $9 to mail it. So, you know, it's these romance novels aren't a huge money maker, you know, for people. I mean, that's a lot of books for not much profit on the seller's end. Um, but, uh, so it shows that these books are still affordable. You know, you can still get some vintage romance novels for a good price. Now, I did have to outbid some people. Uh, some people tried to uh, to get it, and uh, at the end, I was like, you know what? I want that. Den I want the not only the Denise Robbins ones, but I wanted that Daisy Thompson book. I was like, so this will make it all worth it. Um, plus, you know, the, the, all those Harlequins are a bonus. So that's it. That's my uh, latest romance book haul. Thanks for watching.